Would you believe me if I told you Skip Bayless was right about Kevin Durant joining the Brooklyn Nets? In the end, it was about Kyrie and friendship, as you say. Yeah. But Kevin's still too young to opt for just friendship. Kevin Durant just made a huge mistake. To me. Yeah, it's tough for me to admit that too. But the Brooklyn Nets remain in the NBA headlines for all the wrong reasons. But my question is, how did everybody get it so wrong on every level when it came to the expectations that this team was going to achieve? And how did the Nets team go from this to trading some of their main core pieces for a star that didn't even want to be there? James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant only played 16 games together just 16 that's insane and this isn't the first time that the nets mortgage their entire future on a win now approach all for it just to not work out so let's take a step back in reality it all started in 2019 when kyrie recruited kevin durant to the nets stating that they have two max contracts and then it happened Kyrie went to the Nets and Kevin Durant followed suit a year later, signing a max deal, but wouldn't be able to play due to an Achilles injury. Then James Harden put on a fat suit and forced his way out of Houston. And the Nets made one of the dumbest decisions ever by trading away Jared Allen and Karis LeVert, two players who thrived in the Nets system prior to the addition of Kyrie and KD. The Nets could really use Jared Allen right now, just saying, but still, everyone had high hopes for the brooklyn nets i mean look the time the dust settles james harden will win finals mvp this season do you think kevin durant and the brooklyn nets are going to be able to win a championship this year yes yeah. and from there it was still downhill kyrie didn't play he lost about 15 million dollars due to his personal views during the c19 don't want to say it on youtube but he left it up to kd and james harden to win and sorry but harden just looked disinterested a lot of the times on the court he just gave up on plays and he was really showing he wasn't happy with the situation in brooklyn and a lot of people speculate it was due to kyrie irving sitting out now that is followed by a tough loss from milwaukee in game seven we kind of know how the rest of the story goes. James Harden once again forced his way out of Brooklyn and got traded to the 76ers. And for a while, it looked like the Nets won that trade, receiving Andre Drummond, Seth Curry, Ben Simmons, and some draft picks for James Harden. And we see how that's going with Ben Simmons so far. And now, yeah, we're here and the Nets are two and 16 and they're 13th in the East. Steve Nash is no longer the head coach. And the last thing on anyone's mind in Brooklyn is basketball. And it really sucks to see. So now waking up to Adam Silver, formally addressing Kyrie Irving and saying he wants to meet with him personally. I don't know about you all, but it's hard for me to remember a time when an NBA commissioner wanted to meet personally with an NBA player outside of draft night to discuss something they did off court. As I said in the last video, all of this comes at extremely poor timing for Kyrie Irving. It's like the Nets have no control over their organization whatsoever. And unfortunately, we won't get to see what the Nets were able to accomplish at full strength if they were just able to focus on basketball. We really only got a few memorable moments from this group, and it really was the great playoff series they had against the Bucks, who are a great team in their own right. So now, the question is, what does this mean for Kyrie Irving, and what does it mean for the Nets? Well, for Kyrie, my fears are coming true for him. To be on a contract year, he's not making smart decisions. Most guys who wanna get paid and they're on a contract year, they lock in and they focus. And a lot of times we see them play some of the best basketballs of their career because they wanna get paid and which how much flat Kyrie has gotten this past week, this isn't a good look for his brand. And it's troublesome because it poses the question, will Kyrie Irving be out of the NBA? Again, whether you agree or disagree with how this is being handled by the NBA, it's unfortunate for Kyrie because we know, and I know, I don't think he really had poor intentions for sharing this documentary. I think Kyrie's a guy who wants to help. And I feel like once he's obsessed 
with finding something he wants to share it and as we know he's been obsessed with finding his heritage which for a lot of people is the case knowing your roots and where you come from gives you a sense of purpose and unfortunately in this case it did more harm than good I'm hoping the meeting, go, the meeting goes well with Adam Silver so everyone can put this behind them and forget it happened, much like everything else these days, and we can get back to basketball. But for the Brooklyn Nets, they have way bigger problems they need to take care of. One is finding a head coach and finding a team that works around their two stars. If this project doesn't work, it will be one of the biggest failures in NBA history. And to me, it just kind of proves I would rather have a good NBA team versus a super team all day. While super teams and stars linking up looks great on paper, it doesn't always guarantee success. And we've seen that so many times within the last decade. You look at teams who are grown within, like the Warriors, at one point before they added Kevin Durant, now the Milwaukee Bucks, the Toronto Raptors, yeah, they added Kawhi, but for the most part, they developed their talent within. It really starts to pose the question, is pursuing a win now approach worth it? Does managing multiple superstar personalities guarantee a championship? And I really don't know the answer to that, but just leave this video and remember, Skip Bayless was right. Kevin Durant just made a huge mistake. 